Welcome back. I'm John Furrier. You're the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, and we are live in San Francisco, California for the Node Summit Conference. This is a conference that celebrates the, the rapid rise of Node.js, a development environment that is just taking the world by storm. All the top alpha developers are here. Uh, hackers are here. Uh, executives are here. Entrepreneurs are here. Venture capitalists are here. And uh, this Node.js product is really becoming a framework for expanded productivity for developers, bringing out new mobile solutions to the marketplace, and uh, SiliconAngle.com is covering with theCUBE. theCUBE is our flagship telecast where we go out to the events and talk to people and interview them and get the knowledge and share that with you, and we're here talking about what the impact is from developers building new mobile apps, web apps, uh, to market, getting funding, and all this, all this activity around the developer marketplace that's driving massive innovation. Obviously San Francisco is where ground zero is for Node.js, and uh, we're here broadcasting live uh, with SiliconAngle.com. So all the coverage you want to see, go to SiliconAngle.com every day, and that's where the innovation reference point is. I'm joined here for this segment with David Floyer, who's co-founder of Wikibon.org. Silicon Angle's research group that does all the deep dives on, uh, on technology, goes in the weeds, talks about all the key aspects of, of tech. Uh, David is uh, a guru in I.O., in storage, in systems. So David, welcome back to theCUBE and great to have you. Oh, thanks, it's great to be back again. So, so David, we want to talk to you about um, what's going on here at Node.js. Obviously, I want to get your perspective. Uh, you just wrote a manifesto on wikibon.org and we wrote a blog post on it at siliconangle.com with all the links there. So go to siliconangle.com and look for that post if you're interested in the manifesto. But you really did some deep dives around the future of systems around I.O. And, and before we go into depth on the manifesto, I want to get your perspective around what's changing in the, in the architecture of the, of the internet and the internet applications um, that drive that. Obviously, the systems that drive everything have storage, they have compute, they have I.O., network transport, and now applications on the iPhone or mobile devices or the web need to leverage that that environment, and we're seeing that in two massive surges around cloud computing and the rise of the computer at the edge, the mobile device, the web app. So, so what's your take around Node.js, Node this Node Summit event, and, and I.O. in particular? Oh, that's, uh, that's a great question. And uh, uh, it's, it's great to be here at the summit. There's a, a buzz, there's a huge number of young, extremely uh, talented uh, programmers here. And they're tackling the problems of this mobile computing, they're tackling the problems of vast amounts of messages going between people from machine to machine, uh, their, their mobile messages. And what they're doing is providing a framework where very high speed transport of these messages, uh, analysis of these messages, usage of these messages is going on. And uh, the, it's, uh, the speed is more important than uh, uh, absolute certainty of delivery of the message. So it's, it's a new paradigm and obviously that's going to be a culture shock as it goes into the enterprise, which it, which it will. Um, it'll be a culture shock against people who are used to guaranteed deliveries, uh, absolute certainty, acid properties of database, to be dealing with uh, uh, environments where guarantee is not absolute, uh, acidity is not absolute, and they will have to find new ways of, of solving these problems. So it's a very exciting time. So, so let's just talk about the applications on the web. So the web, we're all used to Facebook and chat and, sure. and instant messaging. Yeah. But we, mm -hmm. we now have you know, moved from this PC era to an era of mobility where Absolutely. you can have a cell phone, have, be logged on at home. So all these things are going on and massive amounts of people can connect to any different application at any different time. Mm -hmm. uh, it puts a new kind of, uh, new constraints on subsystems or these, these computing Ab systems. So what, what, yes. describe that a little bit and what that means and, and the challenges of a developer who's just writing code, JavaScript or building Absolutely. a game. Yeah. Um, you know, all this stuff has to take into account all this complexity. You, you, you have to abstract it out as much as possible and rely on uh, great standards like HTML5. You can abstract as much as possible out into uh, uh, platforms like uh, Node.js and make it quick and easy and simple to develop these applications with, with less skilled people. And that's what 
the, 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 the joy of Node.js is, is that it's, it's so simple, so quick and easy to develop. Uh, it's a set of nodes being spun up all over the place and, and in, in interfacing with each other and relying on services from other parts of the uh, infrastructure to do the delivery to the Android or the Apple or, or, uh, or uh, uh, do the delivery across uh, on a global scale or planetary scale across the, the whole network. Well, we get a lot of wa viewers from Justin Debt TV and they, they're familiar with gaming and you know, gaming Absolutely. has a lot of concurrency, yeah. a lot of simultaneous yeah. users, a yeah. lot of in-game complexity. They use a lot of big data to track all this stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that goes under the covers um, sure. that a, a normal designer, programmer might not have to take advantage of like operating systems, things like threading, all this complexity. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's kind of yeah. new to this world and that's what this conference is about. Right. Um, you have been doing some, some real seminal work in this same area relative to big companies, and we, you know, we all know about Apple and, and Facebook have massive amounts of constraints, and it has a lot to do with the storage and I.O. So let's talk about your manifesto, your research piece that you posted uh, called the I.O. infrastructure, I.O.-centric infrastructure, uh, a little bit further. What was your key findings in your research? Well, the key finding, and I, I've been talking about it for some time, is that the disk systems themselves are, are the constraint on, uh, on so many applications. If you're going to make sure you have uh, guaranteed delivery of data, you have to put it onto some sort of disk. Uh, that's the only way you can guarantee that you'll find it when the system goes down. So that is that constraint in, uh, of disk is, is, is that disk is just so, so slow and very, very um, narrow path to a huge amount of data. And they have not been speeding up at all. The amount of data you can store is massive on disk. It's very cheap per gigabyte. But the cost of it per IO has, has, has not come down at the same rate. So what's interested me is the use of flash devices. And one of the things that happened very recently, which was seminal, was the um, uh, demonstration of a billion IOPS system. Uh, it, it just took uh, uh, eight of these uh, processors with uh, 64 cards to deliver a billion IOPS. Uh, that was between Fusion IO and HP in San Francisco just a few weeks ago. And what I did in this- Hold on, just back yeah. up a second. So HP yep. and Fusion IO, so HP servers, HP servers and Fusion IO, uh, Proline 370 servers and Fusion IO, the uh, IO uh, memory cards, memory to duo, cards. which is SSD or flash, right? Yeah, solid which is state. the SS solid state uh, MLC cards. Uh, so uh, an amazing amount of density of IO uh, that could be generated. Now, very small IOs, 64 bytes only in size. Uh, so a, a very trivial in size compared with most applications, but really a, an amazing achievement. So um, can we go to your slide on the manifesto and yeah. talk about some of the components around this IO-centric architecture? Right, so if we look at the slide, um, you'll see that there are five layers in this uh, IO-centric infrastructure. Um, so the, the top layer is the working uh, flash uh, storage layer. So what we're looking at there is what came out of this, um, this demonstration, is a very, very tight connection between the processor and the flash itself. So they, they're doing something called atomic writes, and what that means is that instead of going through the I.O. stack, which is thousands of instructions long, you're doing a single instruction and writing it to, in one pass, to the flash. And that is orders of magnitude faster than the previous ways of doing it. Um, so that very tight coupling, that use of, of atomic write, um, the first demonstration of this is really a breakthrough. And that allows huge amounts of I.O. to be processed very, very quickly indeed. And that's got real ramifications, which we'll come to a little bit later on, how you design systems in this sort of environment. Uh, so that's the first layer. The second layer is that, or if you take the third layer next, the one in the middle, that's a series of, of uh, shared infrastructure, shared flashes. Um, and, and 
lots of uh, flash only or mainly flash uh, devices which are connected to that uh, first layer. And then between the two is an active management layer to manage the, the, the flow of data from the top to that shared layer and back up again. This is, this is the active data that you're focusing on. And the thesis is that almost all active data will be in flash uh, over the next decade. It'll, it'll be the, where, where active data lies. So that's the first three of those. So who, who's impacted by this? Obviously, um, there's some real success stories around here. Talk about the companies that are, that are affected by this. I mean, also we've been following the, the rapid success of Fusion IO, went public, they've been on the Cube since our first sure. Cube gig, yeah. um, Solid Fire, and then EMC, the, the, the big whale in storage, who's, who's actually been servicing that market of very well. Normal stories. Yeah. So to yeah. take us through the, the horses on the track here. Well, we, you've got Fusion IO, obviously a relatively newcomer. They, were, they uh, came on board four years ago using PCIe cards uh, as opposed to SSDs. Um, you've got HP, uh, who have been a partner with Fusion IO uh, on the ProLiance servers, and they've embraced this, uh, this uh, technology. So those are two leading horses. And HP is, uh, is trying to bring together servers and storage into a single unit, into a single uh, uh, component that you buy together. And that's a very exciting strategy for them. It makes a lot of sense uh, to, to bring those two things together. So the systems expertise of HP is going to be very important in looking for solutions in this area. Um, you mentioned uh, EMC as another player in this area. They have Project Lightning, which they, is their announcement of getting into the flash and right, IO yes. area. That's very interesting indeed, because what they're looking to do is to put PCIe cards into the servers and also manage those together with the uh, arrays, the, the shared storage arrays in, in layer three on the, on the diagram. So they, are, they have FAST, which is part of that uh, active layer, uh, uh, active um, management of, of data level. Uh, they have fast, um, they obviously will have caching to begin with, but the really interesting thing is when they get further down their program and start to introduce uh, cache coherency across uh, the servers and the uh, and the layer three. That's very interesting technology that will will be necessary. Let's, let's talk about the opportunity for Fusion IO, Solid Fire, and say EMC, for example. So here at Node Summit, the talk is developers on the front end flexing their muscle, becoming more back end like. Uh, right. We talked with Matt Rainey, who's the, the founder of Voxer, one of the most successful, fastest growing apps, and we we right. chatted last right. night at dinner yeah. over a million, I think, a million users a day or a month or whatever it was. Large number, doing a lot of IO stuff. I asked him specifically. Um, if he's using any innovation on hardware, he said, mm, I don't know, we just go with the hosting. That's right. So yeah. for him, they're mm. kind of ignorant to what goes on in the back end. That's an right. opportunity for EMCs yeah. of the world. So Absolutely. how does EMC become better for this market as the market is obviously rising the tide on the developer mm. side? Mm. Mm. How does mm. the traditional storage vendors and the newbies like F uh, SolidFire and Fusion IO, how do they service that market? Uh, it's a very, very, very interesting discussion, and being part of that discussion, obviously the I.O. that he's talking about is audio, it's large amounts. If you lose a bit or two, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so it's, it fits into the paradigm here at Node very well indeed. And, and for that particular application, that may or may not be the, the, the right usage of this technology. But what is important is when you go into the enterprise, um, uh, guaranteed delivery becomes much more important. Uh, there is, uh, there is a, a, a desire to reduce risk, uh, the impact of risk if you lose a transaction or something of that sort. So in that case, the, the guarantees come from being able to write as soon as possible to a persistent medium, in this case, the flash device. And that is extremely important for enterprise type applications. So EMC, are, 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 if they go into this business, they're going to use their strong relationship with VMware, uh, being able to add technology to the VMware level, the hypervisor level, being able to improve the IO, uh, being able to write that IO and guaranteed uh, a right, uh, security of that IO. Those are areas which EMC can really add a tremendous so amount you, so to you're the So you're saying, if I read you correctly, 
the Node Summit, the Node.js opportunity actually helps these guys. Absolutely. EMC and SolidFire oh, and, and sure. Yes, Nail. yes. I mean, the, the, there is a market out there that will uh, will want to do lots and lots of I/O, and that I/O on disk is just as slow on a Joe, uh, on a Node.js system as it is anywhere else. And these technologies will come in, in my view, uh, uh, up and down the stack. Let's talk about HP. HP uh, storage and networking is doing very well within HP. Obviously, you mentioned the IOPS, uh, one billion IOPS with Fusion IO. That was a demonstration with HP servers. Yeah. Obviously, HP storage has a huge acquisition last year with 3PAR. Yeah. And that's large scale storage. So what does that mean for 3PAR? What does this all mean for 3PAR? Can you elaborate on uh, the 3PAR, HP 3PAR storage sure. uh, component? And of the one of the announcements that HP have made is, is the uh, bringing together of servers and storage in packages, del delivering them together. That's a very interesting uh, development. The other very, very interesting development in this mid-range and this management across these devices are the federated storage that 3PAR has announced. So the ability to be able to move applications in the same way as VM, but do it from uh, array to array is very, very exciting technology uh, to be able to, if you like, virtualize movement across those sub, sub parts of it. So there's a lot of technology there that they can bring to bear to help in this new type of uh, a large IO environment. Um, obviously, they're, they're going to have to make investments in the flash end uh, uh, as well within the array side, but, but they have a lot of interesting technologies to add that will uh, be uh, contributing to this. Uh, so this, this, this category four hurricane that I called earlier, called Node.js, is really on a collision course with these big guys like HP and EMC, because we heard from Theo Schlossnagel, who's, who runs Omni TI, operating system guy, works on large scale, big deployments, a lot of enterprise, a lot of service providers. Uh, his comment was legitimate around that a lot of these guys who are kind of getting more back end capabilities with Node, just aren't visible to all the problems that go on in the right. lower level system components. So people who understand systems programming and systems design have been there before. There's more operational processes in place and it's always up and running. So these guys are going into an environment they just right. know nothing about, really. And they're kind of ignorant. I mean, they don't, they could know in theory, but at practical purposes, this is really a perfect storm for HP 3PAR and EMC yep. Lightning if they play their cards right, is that correct? Uh, absolutely, um, yeah, because at the end of the day you need operational systems that stay up and, and keep up and that needs solid processes and solid quality uh, processes, all of the normal infrastructure methods that have been done. At the same time, the Node.js people are doing things in, in record time and developing things, and they have their massive contribution, and the yeah. two together is going to be very exciting. You know, we've had uh, Fusion IO on theCUBE, and uh, we've had Solid Fire. Great technologies, but SolidFire in particular, the CEO there was at, was used to be with Rackspace, so he understands Rackspace. And we just heard from mm. Theo that Rackspace mm. has been quietly doing a lot of Node for their deployments. So it's interesting to see how SolidFire is very well positioned for this, as to keep up with the scale of provisioning and deployment of of, of IO and storage. Uh, and, and SolidFire of. Uh, They've got a very interesting uh, angle on, particularly important in this area, which is that the, the key cost item in Flash is rights. Um, and those are the things you've got to monitor and allocate out and, and cost for. So they've, they've thought through very carefully the cost allocation uh, infrastructure that's going to be allow service providers, for example, to be able to uh, uh, throttle or give specific amounts of I.O. And that's what people are going to be buying. It's not, there's, a, there's more than enough gigabytes around the place. What they'll be buying is the I.O. capability and the rapid I.O. capability, and you've got to, you've got to pay for that. And, and they don't want to give away I.O. If it's if the spare I.O., they just certainly don't want to give it away. Let me ask you about another company called Data Direct Networks, or DDN. So I've been having conversations with John Luke Chatelain, who came from HP as a senior executive now at DDN. He ran a lot of the information governance services side of HP for years. Brilliant man. He's been on theCUBE. I got some great interviews with him and one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, but fantastic uh, technical and business leader. I've talked to their technical teams. They've come out with a very successful approach around Object Store, where 
you can store all this stuff. So wh where do they fit into this equation? Obviously, d th that approach seems to work here. What's your take on DDN relative to all these new trends? Well, uh, what we didn't go through is the last two layers of the manifesto, which is the archive management layer and then the base layer, which is uh, mainly disk-based. I mean, that's, disk is not going away. Disk has got a very important part to play. Um, so what you want to do then is that within the whole process, when you gather the data at the beginning, you're going to be doing the metadata and the indices right at, from the get-go and be putting that into the, into the third layer. And the advantage of that then is that when you create the archives or when you create the long-term backups, you've got all the metadata there. You've done the deduplication. You've done all the stuff to condense it down. And then at the back end, what you need is very high-speed devices, very cost-effective devices, both to store it and to distribute it uh, uh, across uh, across a network. So WAS is a, is a great uh, product that DDN have. Uh, web object systems, let's yes, call it. Right? Yes, web object uh, systems. It's an object, uh, object based uh, storage mechanism which will allow you to distribute stuff across the whole of the network. And DDN have a great set of very high speed, so low So that's, that's a cloud opportunity and multi-geography yeah. opportunity, right? Absolutely. And, and again, this, this emphasizes, the sp if you want to get that data back, uh, from that lowest level, that it emphasizes absolute top speed of getting it back, uh, especially sequential and, and large objects such as okay. video. So we got Fusion IO, Solid Fire, uh, EMC with their project Lightning, HP 3 par obviously in that in that world. Yep. DDN is a ca candidate to benefit from these trends. Um, what other clients have you are you following now um, that are interesting in this area that might make sense? Oh, well, we're, we're following a lot of different companies. Um, for example, one of the ones which uh, I've always been an advocate of their technology is CleverSafe. Um, they've brought in the ability to both uh, to to to, to distribute um, uh, IO archives across ge geographically and guarantee that they can recover, if they distribute a slice, 20 different slices, they can guarantee, for example, they can recover from the loss of eight of them, enormous guarantees with far less overhead uh, because of their use of erasure coding far less overhead than the traditional uh, ray techniques or, or, or extra copies. So they've got some very interesting technology that's going to allow the bottom end of this to be able to distribute that storage safely. And at the same time, because the metadata and the indices are all in the active data, if they're required, they can be got at very quickly indeed and, and recovered. So again, this type of computing where they're, they, they're allowed to have the indices and the, and the hard stuff and, and process the archives before they're put down to disk is going to be a, a great boon to them. And, and they're going to be working, I'm sure, very closely with a lot of archive vendors to uh, add value in so, this space. So obviously a lot of funding coming into the sector um, and some new companies that are growing very rapidly besides the one uh, Solid Fire, which we, we think is one of the hottest ones out there, um, is yeah. Verident. You, um, you've been talking to those guys. They just yeah. closed uh, mm -hmm. $21 million on a Series C funding, very well funded. It's a flash. It's got a performance aspect of it. We're all talking about performance here. This yeah. is all I.O. performance, right? So latency, are they yeah. relevant in this conversation? Oh, uh, absolutely. They uh, they have uh, great PCIe cards. They are very, very fast indeed. What, what uh, Fusion IO showed was that latency really matters. Um, uh, it, 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 it really helps if you take uh, milliseconds, microseconds off things. Viridant have taken it that even further. Uh, they've got some amazing uh, um, capabilities in terms of response time. Uh, they're going to they're need to partner with people in this space um, to provide the same sort of services, um, particularly on the, um, uh, on the uh, uh, interface, close interface between the processes and the servers and the, and the interfaces from the, the servers back to the mid-range. But uh, they're a very interesting company, um, some great technology, and I think uh, if they get the, uh, their partnerships right, they're going to be very successful. Well, we'll put them on the list. So, so in summary, um, this uh, Node.js, and quite frankly, 
mobile and cloud and social in general are rapidly changing and disrupting the architecture of um, how firms are organizing their IT infrastructure and service provider infrastructure. The benefits to the business uh, line is t driving top line revenue and also reducing costs, which is the key to business. Um, obviously the big players that take advantage of this that are positioned for success, HP with the three power acquisition, EMC gearing up with Project Lightning. We expect a big announcement this month or next month coming out something new there. Um, um, recently gone public Fusion IO, um, upstarts like SolidFire, Verident, and CleverSafe all positioned perfectly uh, for this massive new surge and should drive a ton of revenue and a lot of competition, and, and that's good for these developers and this, this growing market. Uh, so, um, great input, great manifesto, IT-centric infrastructure, clearly powering the developers. We're seeing that with Joyin and all these guys powering some great solutions, and they need some back-end help, and I think those systems guys will step up to the table and, and provide, provide that, that level of expertise yeah. Yeah. because we heard from Theo, code breaks, and that's normal yeah. in their operations, and that's okay, iterate, iterate, iterate. However, to run systems, you yeah. can't be down. So I think there's going to be a really nice intersection here between the two. Yeah, and there's one last thing I'd like to say is that what's going to drive this is that the applications that can be written with this type of technology are, are, are going to be completely new. They've been constrained by small amounts of IO. What you can do is consolidate those databases, you can link those databases, you can do your uh, data warehousing at the same time as you're ingesting that data. That's going to lead to a completely new set of applications, the, 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 the types of applications that we're seeing now in Node.js, for example, new applications, uh, completely different paradigms of developing analytical applications. I think it's going to be the most exciting uh, decade uh, in computing that's coming up. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv, and I'm here with David Floyer, co-founder and chief researcher at Wikibon.org, laying out his IT-centric infrastructure thesis and research. Um, ties perfectly into all the, the thermal trends, mega trends around Node.js, and the rapid, rapid rise of this new type of developer, and it's really going to intersect beautifully with the existing market, great research, and uh, this is all intersecting. It's a perfect storm for SiliconAngle and Wikibon, Dave, because we have been covering big data with Hadoop world, we have siliconangle.com, we have DevOps angle, we got services angle, and this is right in our wheelhouse, and uh, we have the Strata conference coming up around the corner, we're going to hear the big data angle, which again is the whole database, non no SQL and SQL, all intersecting with this real time and on demand, cloud computing storage, IO, IO is the key to success, You've nailed it with your thesis. And let's bring in Jeff Kelly, who's on top of the big data world at Wikibon. He's the Wikibon analyst, and uh, he's also uh, going to be at Strata with us. Uh, let's go remote, if we can, to Jeff Kelly from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Jeff, we've been following the conversation. We'd love to get your take on what's happening with uh, the collision course between big data, databases, and cloud and I.O., and, and ex what's your take on that? Well, hi, John. Thanks for having me on. Well, you know, I think uh, clearly uh, kind of the the intersection here between big data uh, and Node.js uh, is, is all around application development, big data application development. And I think that's really, uh, you know, kind of the next step we need to see in the big data, big data industry. Um, we've seen the yeah, kind of the infrastructure layer mature to the point where we're seeing more, more enterprises kind of go from POC environments to production environments, uh, bringing in uh, huge volumes of data. But, but the next step is now that you've got that infrastructure in place is, uh, building and applying applications on top of it uh, to kind of operationalize some of the insights you've gleaned from that big data uh, to to make it uh, reusable. So I think uh, that's that's really what what we're talking about here is the ability to, to build these applications of bringing in real time data, uh, you know, along with some of more your, your more traditional structured data. Um, it really opens up a whole new uh, range of possibilities uh, for the types of applications you can build. What's your take on what's happening in the database world with big data? And obviously, um, you know, you've been covering a lot of the big storage guys as it relates to big data. We've been talking about this notion of a systems programmer that's a little bit more deeper expertise than some of the front end JavaScript guys, which has been exploding with success. Uh, they're kind of coming together and married, marrying the two. You got EMC, HP 3PAR, um, SolidFire, Fusion IO, and Veridin, CleverSafe, and DDN all out there. What's your, how do you break down, how do you handicap the, the opportunity for the big guys to bring that expertise over 
to allow these guys to continue to scale as, as these new communities like Node and others uh, continue to innovate at the front end of this? Mm -hmm. Well, I think certainly the, the big players are embracing a movement like NoSQL. Um, you've seen Oracle uh, a couple of weeks ago releasing their big data appliance, which incorporates Hadoop in the form of Cloudera's distribution along with their own NoSQL database uh, based on the Berkeley DB. Um, so I think you know the, the big players are in a good good position right now. They they they're starting to understand the the um, possibilities that are that these types of technologies are making possible. Uh, they're slowly you know they they don't they totally don't move as fast as some of the some of the startups, uh, and they're 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 kind of taking a deliberate approach. But we're finally starting to see some of the big players like Oracle, um, even SAP to a smaller degree, kind of t taking a different angle, but also kind of embracing the, the notion of big data at least as they see it. Uh, so I think we're going to see more of that. Uh, I would expect in the big data database NoSQL movement to see some uh, consolidation in the next couple of years. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if some of the Hadoop players were acquired uh, by some of the bigger players. So I think slowly they're starting to get it, and I think slowly they're going to start incorporating more of the big data NoSQL approaches into their, into their product lines. So we heard from Theo Schlossnagel, who's a very huge maverick in IT and infrastructure. He's a systems program. He's the CEO of a company. Uh, he says, you know, his job as a CEO, like others, is to uh, increase revenue and lower costs. Obviously, pretty obvious. You don't need to go to business school to figure that out. But he's also a geek, and he runs the Surge Conference. Um, he, we were really being critical of the word DevOps, um, and he specifically talked about developers write code and expect operations just go do it, um, where you know code breaks and operations got guys can't break. I mean, they literally run systems all day long, so it's, you know, he was kind of saying it's it's become this thankful, jo thankless job, but in reality, it should be ops dev. So obviously you deal with a lot of the, the serious vendors out there like EMC and HP 3PAR who have to run these large systems of different uh, levels of SLA performance that they have to deliver. What are you hearing from those guys relative to this new emerging trends around, you know, okay, I got it, it needs to run, be iterate, be fast, real time, cool, but, it has to run. Sure. Well, that's you know that's the million dollar question. I mean, the the promise of big data has been out there for a while, but the whole the whole question is you know can you uh, achieve the level of performance uh, necessary to make it um, stable to make it practical? So uh, you know I think they, they're they're recognizing that um, you know we're getting to the point as I said earlier where kind of the the infrastructure layer is starting to mature to the point where it's fairly stable. Uh, we can count on some. Uh, few downturns, few downtimes, but uh, you know they have to understand that it's you have to balance the need for that kind of stable performance with the need to be to, to innovate. Um, so you know in the big data world, it's kind of you know cutting edge. There are uh, you know areas that are, still need to mature significantly, but I think the, the whole question is, is balancing those two those two different sides of the of the equation. Well, we know you're tracking those guys with David Floyer. We know that you're kicking some serious butt out there with Wikibon. We appreciate it. Um, we know that, um, obviously we know because we're working on it together, the Cube will be at Strata uh, coming up. So do you have an update on Strata? What do you hear? I know you're talking to a lot of the vendors that will hopefully come on the Cube. And uh, how's Strata coming together from a calendar standpoint, editorial? What do you think Strata is going to be like this year? Uh, it's coming together great. Uh, had a good conversation with that dumbbell uh, last week, actually. Uh, from O'Reilly talking about some of the themes are going to be, uh, we're going to be exploring there. Um, among them, uh, Hadoop in particular is going to, is going to take a larger role. Uh, you may have heard uh, Hadoop World and uh, it's not going to be incorporated into Strata New York, which happens in the fall. So that's going to be one area that we're going to cover heavily. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot of the, the big MPP data warehouse vendors are going to all be there. So we're going to try to have all them on and uh, try to help, help our uh, audience kind of help them handicap those different vendors and the different options out there uh, from that regard. Um, and of course, the application uh, development uh, situation is, is critical uh, to, at this point in the big data landscape. Um, you know, kind of that, as I mentioned, the, with, with the, the plumbing, so to speak, kind of maturing, it's time to start really building uh, innovative applications to, to production, put that kind of data into, and insights into production. So we're going to see a lot of uh, coverage of that. You know, in terms of the guests, we're, we're working hard. Uh, we're going to have a great lineup, just as we did at Hadoop World and at uh, Strata last spring. Uh, you can expect you know all the major players to be on, um, and uh, now, right now we're just uh, scheduling and uh, getting it all set. It's going to be a great show. Okay, we're Jeff Kelly, uh, big data analyst at Wikibon.org, tracking the big data space and storage. Thanks uh, for coming in, um, teleprompting in here. Appreciate it on Skype. 
Um, say hi to Dave Vellante over there in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. We really appreciate your insight, and uh, we'll see you at Strata in uh, California. Great. Looking forward to it. Thanks, John. Well, David Floyer, um, obviously your colleague, um, Jeff Kelly, uh, really sharp guy, great writer, on top of the big data space, which is Hadoop and now MapR and other proprietary approaches. Um, it's really converging in with, uh, with, with this world. And, and for the folks out there, SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon work together with research and publishing. SiliconAngle.com is the reference point for all the real-time information and all the in-depth knowledge on Wikibon.org, like the research paper that David wrote about IT-centric infrastructure. SiliconAngle.com is now a network. We have multiple verticals. We have launched this year Services Angle with support from EMC. We really appreciate EMC there. Services Angle, I guess, is the uh, the the ops dev section of our of our programming, more the higher end uptime services models with EMC, the HPs and IBMs of the world, Accenture's, et cetera. DevOps, which we launched today, is much more of the software side of the approach. So what we're doing at SiliconANGLE and Wikibon is we're really going to surround the castle in this, in this marketplace because the disruption is real, the architecture's changing, approaches are changing, business models are changing, and we're going to cover it from all the angles. DevOps, to services angle, so uh, I'm pretty excited, and, and uh, how, how do you feel about that? I feel great, and uh, just going back to the conversation with uh, Jeff, and we're looking at big data now, um, being able to bring in lots and lots of data for analysis, and we're looking at the big data from a transactional point of view, being able to manage these huge numbers of uh, uh, messages going between machines and people, and, and uh, and devices of all, uh, two devices of all sorts. So we're getting a, a, a massive increase in the amount of data that's there, the amount of data to be processed. So we're, we're having a, a, a combination of big data for transactions, big data for analytics coming together and changing the way that uh, business is run. I just, you know, I, I got a degree in computer science and. Um, my operating systems background and database, and, and especially in database and operating systems, and, and the word system software was a, a word that Theo, and a lot of people are kicking around, and, and Steve Harrod talked a lot about, because he's a total OS geek, um, is real, people get pumped up. This is an operating system. The playground of mm -hmm. development is emerging, new things are happening, um, but it's interesting. You got system software, but we got on end, two ends of the spectrum, software and systems coming together. So it's going to be very interesting to watch yeah. the evolution of these, these worlds coming together, and will it be a total collision? Will it integrate well? Yep. Who drives what? Who's enabling who? Okay. Right now it seems to be, you know, You've some... You've got the collision between the hypervisors, the operating systems, the file systems, the database systems, uh, all of these coming together, and, and they're going to be jockeying for their position in the, in, the cha in the chain, in the food chain, and wanting to dominate as much as possible. So it's a very, very the exciting be The area. beautiful thing of all that, the benefit to society is better apps, more, more solutions, yeah. uh, whether it's Salesforce automation down to gaming. Yeah. Right, yeah. so uh, you know yeah. we're seeing a ton yeah. of innovation. This explosion yeah. is something that we've heard time and time again here at this conference and other cube gigs we've done from from senior executives to entrepreneurs. Like I haven't seen this much excitement and change yeah. for well, decades. Well, we've we've seen gone through server uh, consolidation with virtualization. We've gone through storage consolidation with virtualization, and now we're going to go through application consolidation, database consolidations, which are going to simplify the way that businesses are run, reduce the cost of running those business, and allow them to do things they couldn't even dream about before. So, very exciting time. Very exciting. We're here at Node Summit live, where Node.js is going front and center. It's creating some innovation. We heard from David Floyer about the systems change, and SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon.org provide free open source content. You can take it, it's free. We don't charge for it, we want to empower knowledge, the CUBE broadcast live video. Um, and Dave, I want to congratulate you on some really cutting edge work around this new concept of uh, um, IO centric architecture and infrastructure. Uh, it's brilliant, it spans across not just storage and enterprise, but it's spanning into the cloud world. So we'll be watching with DevOps angle all the way through services angle. And again, our, our motto is cloud mobile social at Silicon Angle, uh, where computer science meets social science. We're going to continue to bring that to you. Thanks for watching. We're going to be back in five minutes uh, with more interviews from Node Summit in San Francisco, California.